Hi, I'm Katie from Homeschool in the Heat, and this is my daughter Molly. Hi. And today we're going to talk to you about her favorite gather round unit space. Gather round space is going to come if you get the digital bundle with the teacher's guide and then all the student notebooks. So that ranges from pre reader to early reader to early elementary, which I do not have shown here, although I probably have some early elementary pages in here, upper elementary, middle school, and then high school. So you get all those levels in the digital bundles. That's a really good deal if you have a larger family. You can also get the optional cursive book, and then there are handwriting pages that come in the regular workbooks that are print. So some days she did copy work in print, some days she did it in cursive. So we used both, so I'll show you that in a minute. The heart of Gather Round is going to be your teacher's guide. This one I printed and bound with disc binding. I do have now a ProClick binder and that's what I use now. The other option is just to put it on an iPad or your phone or your laptop and look at it that way or even project it onto a TV. And we did do that quite a bit. And you will find a table of contents. It's gonna cover from general to more specific. So it starts with what is astronomy talks about galaxies and solar systems, and then it goes into our solar system, starting with the sun and moving all the way down through the planets, through the asteroids, comets, and meteoroids, and then dwarf planets, a history of space exploration. That was really fun. Life as an astronaut, we really liked that. Rockets, stars, constellations, and then gravity and light, because you really can't understand the rest of it if you don't understand that. There is an appendix with timeline of different discoveries in astronomy. There's maps, there's flashcards. Once you get into it, there is a book list. This is not a required list of books. These are suggested books. These are things that your kids might like that you might like. You do not need to stick to these. You do not need to go broke trying to find all these books or any of these books. The idea is if you're like, I have no idea what my kids might like, you can look through here at their age and see what might be good. You can also do what a lot of people do and you just go to the library and you can ask the library to help you or you can do it yourself and just find books on space. Anything that has to do with the topic at hand that looks like your kid might enjoy it. So we brought home tons of books and I have no idea if they were on this list or not, I'll be honest. Then there's a supply list as well. This will show you what you need for all the different activities and you can see there's a lot of hands-on activities in here but it doesn't feel overwhelming. They're always optional, they're not required, and they're things that you probably have on hand. There is one big project they suggest that if you wanted to, you could build a model of the solar system. We didn't do that. We did this at the start of the pandemic. That was beyond my mental bandwidth, and I ordered a really nice model of the solar system. That was good. They get plenty. There's more than enough. You don't have to do all these activities. If you're a paper planner, I'm a digital planner, but if you're a paper planner kind of person, you can go in and put notes uh, there's maybe videos you want to watch or activities you want to do. Here's more shopping lists, notes. Again, this is for people who just want to do that. You do not have to go nuts planning and planning and planning. So people like to, you don't have to. So there's an introduction. That's the first lesson. There's great photos. And again, that's one of the benefits of projecting it onto the screen. You can see how letting your kids see this stuff while you're talking about it would be helpful. All right, and then there'll be an overview, a day at a glance of what each of your different level kids are doing and any answer keys that you need. A lot of times the reading, like this lesson here, will be broken up with activity breaks and it'll tell you to do something, just get the wiggles out and give them a break. Often that's when we would also stick in a video and you can also explore these websites in greater detail if your kid want to do that. If your oldest is only, you know, first or second grade, just paraphrase some of it. You can skip a sentence here or there. You could look over it first, highlight what you definitely want to tell them, and just read that, and then maybe read the rest of it to them while they're doing their coloring or their activity. That's fine. You can give them the coloring page to do while you read to them. That's a great idea. You can give them, especially older kids, their notebooking page to work on as you read. That's fine, too. Sometimes what I did is I gave my older child this. She would read with me and she could highlight if she wanted important information while I read off of my laptop or off of the TV screen. So lots of great illustrations. It's broken up well. There's extras, there's source material. 
it does work God into it, but it is not overly religious in the sense where it feels super moralistic. Oh, and it does not go into Age of the Earth if you're worried about that, or Age of the Universe. It doesn't discuss any of that. So that's up to you to discuss with your family. This is a sample of the pre-reader notebook. I did not print everything in there because my daughter was two just turning three when we did this and she just wasn't ready to be doing handwriting or letter sounds or anything like that. So I just printed mostly the coloring pages for her. It gave her something to do while the big kids were working. There's some tracing, things like that. They have now a new kindergarten and preschool program. So I don't know how many of these pages are still going to be in the new version of pre-reader. I think they'll still have the coloring pages and then one other activity page. The next level up is early reader and my son who was in first grade did early reader. In every gather round unit they do some kind of project that spans the entire unit and in this one it was to make their own comic book. And it's a little mini comic book so they work on that throughout the whole thing and his I just stuck in this little pocket, that way it stays with it forever and ever. This one is spiral round. I used a pro click hole punch and some spiral coils for it. You can certainly also just do it in a regular three ring binder. So it starts off with astronomy. Every lesson will have a notebooking page and that's true for all the levels. They can write in the answers, they can draw something or they can dictate to you. So it does say have someone else write them for you. At this age, we don't want their handwriting to hold them back from expressing what they've learned. And then all sorts of other subjects are included. This page was about economics. It's gonna talk about specialization versus generalization and economy. So what is specialization? Focusing on an area of expertise. Talks about what kind of job you might wanna specialize in. Then there's copy work and spelling. So this is working on handwriting, but it's also internalizing the grammar and the spelling and the punctuation. As they copy it or trace it, they're learning it and they're learning it in context, which helps so much with retention. We all know kids who can do the grammar and the spelling and whatnot when that's what the page is about, but when it's in their own writing, they can't. Copy work helps bridge that gap. And then there's a little bit of spelling. Again, it seems kind of simplistic, but it's just not beating them over the head with it, and they're already practicing it in the copy work. Okay, there's geography and map work. There's art that talks about music it talks about um, history and famous astronomers, done timelines, grammar, um, art, learning how to draw a circle using a compass or a push pin and making your own compass, tracing things. So all sorts of skills are covered, not just science, not just space. Here's a grammar page. So that is the early reader. My daughter was on the border between early elementary, which is the next level after early reader, and upper elementary, so I mixed pages for her. Again, that's one of the nice things about not binding it ahead of time is I can look at a page and be like, I think that one's too hard or that one's going to be too easy and I can switch them out. So this page is actually an early elementary page right here, so it's just a little bit different. The questions are the same in some places. They're still going to do the interesting fact, but it has a little more specific question there and she was writing in her own instead of me writing it. This one's an upper elementary. So instead of circling a uh, multiple choice answer, she's gonna write out a little bit more. So most of these are upper elementary. This one's an early elementary. I liked their notebooking pages better, I think, when we did this. So she'd write in lots of information. Another kid might want to draw something instead or just do bullet points. You could also do this on an iPad. You could do it using Notability or GoodNotes and have them type their answers in. If you have a dyslexic kid, they could use voice to text. They could grab pictures off the internet and stick them in there. I really like this for dyslexic kids because it's so flexible. So again, history, we've got drawing, learning how to shade and make a 3D shape. So they're learning how to make a sphere and then applying that to the planets. Copy work again, phonics, spelling, Grammar is interwoven into the copywork, and then there's also specific pages. Here's more, this is on landforms, which would be more of an earth science and geography type topic. The water cycle, again, not just space. This is not just a space program that you need to go through and add a bunch of other stuff to. They are learning so much. Here they're working on the continents and the oceans. This is a grammar page. 
that one was in early elementary. So it covers so much. And if you have a kid who's more advanced and maybe a better writer, they can be writing in more information. You re can require a little bit more. Learning about the speech bubbles and comic books and graphic novels here. And then here is her comic book. So she added color a little more, was a little more into it than he was. Again, they do it at their own level, which is great. So she did The Day My Pets Went to Space. And that was her comic book. And they work on that throughout. They learn how to do a storyboard and how to come up with dialogue. So here's um, the storyboards. They do like a frame each day. And finally, here is the cursive book. So again, I did not print out all the pages because sometimes she was doing copy work in print and other days she was doing here. So I just didn't want to overwhelm her with too much of it. She has good handwriting. I didn't think it was necessary to double down on it every day. So that's kind of an example, but there are more pages for kids who need more practice or if you want to do more practice. There's a day with letter formation and then days where they're doing tracing of the copy work passage for the week and days where they're writing it out. And then after that, it started also introducing months of the year as well. One of the extras are flashcards that come in the appendix that you can print out and laminate. I'll be honest, we didn't do a lot with this, but kids who like to do matching games or memory games, would be great for that. They can also practice putting them in order, see how fast they can get all the planets in order. There's also some of the common constellations. I wish what I'd done is put magnets on this and put them up on our fridge so people could have been looking at them and kind of just internalizing them every time they went to get a snack. These are some of the cards that came with it. I used the disc binding and put that into this little flip book and we pulled it out each day. Another option would be to put laminate it like this and put magnets on the back and put it up on a whiteboard. There was one that had a typo on it. I'll be honest, it was the I think the length of the year and one of the planets and we did contact them and I believe they've already corrected that. And the reason that we knew there was a typo in the flashcard is that my daughter was so intrigued by everything we were learning in here that she was researching on her own in other books and she remembered and was able to say, wait, I don't think that's right. Had we been using a boring textbook, we might not have seen the typo, but she also wouldn't have known the information. So I'll call that a win. There were also in the appendix timeline activity cards and they could use these to recreate a timeline in one of the lessons. I will start with the best Professor Noggin's Outer Space card game. I am not a game player. I actually don't like to play games. I admit it. But this was really fun. It's trivia. But the neat thing about it, of course it's all about space, is that each one has an easy level and a hard level. So the whole family can play together. The adults do the hard cards, I'm sorry, the hard questions, and the younger kids can do the easy questions. My 10 year old is obsessed with space. So she beat us at this pretty much every time and she did the hard questions. It does have an element of chance where you can steal someone else's card. If you have a kid who's gonna get upset with that, which I get, you know, just make that not a thing. Make it instead that you roll again or something. And then we had books, right? Everybody loves books if you're a homeschooler. So we have nonfiction and fiction here. They're going to show you that were our favorites. This is Catstronauts Race to Mars. My space living daughter also loves cats. And this is a graphic novel which was perfect since the project was a comic book. So it kind of gave her some ideas of how to do that. Highly recommend. She loved it. Space Cat. This is an old book. It was published in 1951, but it was really cute, very funny, fairly easy to read. We had planned on doing this as a read aloud, but it was simple enough that I actually just handed it off to the kids to read. For nonfiction, we have The Story of Astronomy in Space. This is an Usborne, Usborne, I never know how to say that properly, book. And we use this for reference. The kids oftentimes, as we were working, would have questions and I would say, I don't know. And so we look it up. And that is definitely the best part of Gather Around is you get to learn alongside your kids. There's going to be stuff you don't know and they see you learning. So this can be used for big kids or little kids despite the name. National Geographic Kids, Little Kids First Big Book of Space. They have a whole series 
We have their animal one. We have the bird one, which we used with the North American Birds Unit. I love this series. They're great. The pictures are fantastic. The kids really enjoyed it. Again, both my seven-year-old and my 10-year-old got a lot out of it. This is not just for little, little kids. And it's not intimidating. So kids who maybe don't want to do their own research aren't going to mind picking it up and flipping through it. Or it's great to put in your lap and do as a read aloud because it's got such great big pictures for everyone to see. So I do recommend that, especially if you have younger kids, but for if you have a wide range of ages, it's great too. Professor Astro Cat's Frontiers of Space is written by a physicist. It looks like it's a fiction book. It is not. This book has tons of information. That's a really neat look at all the constellations. So instead of photographs, this one's illustrated. Very informative, despite being very cute and fun. And last, we have this DK Eyewitness Planets. And this one was maybe for older elementary versus younger elementary. It's a little more serious, a little less fun. But it has a ton of great information, and they're in small chunks. So again, less intimidating than a textbook, per se. And lots of great illustrations. We also pulled this out when we were doing our artwork when you were drawing the planets and coloring the planets so we could see what they really look like. So that was a look at my daughter's favorite gather round unit and all the fun that we had with it. What'd you like best about it, Molly? Um, probably the, the planets. Talking about the planets? Yeah, she knows everything about all the planets, length of their day, their rotation, where they are, what their moon's names are, it's crazy. She learned so much. We also, in addition to using the materials that I showed you, we watched a ton of videos and we also did get a telescope. It was actually something that we had given my father and then he let us have it back for the unit. We were able to see the craters of the moon, we looked at Venus, different things like that. So I highly recommend if you can beg, borrow, don't steal, beg and borrow or buy a telescope. It does add to it, but you don't need to. You can find so many wonderful things online there's the games, the models, all that kind of good stuff. If you have any questions about the unit, I am happy to answer them, or I can have Molly answer them if your kids have a question about the unit. <laughs> Finally, I did want to give a brief comparison between Gather Round Space and The Good and the Beautiful Space. I actually own both of them. We started to do the good and the beautiful space before the holidays. We stopped because of the, you know, with the holidays. And then we started back up. I went ahead and got gather round space. I like it better. It covers more subjects. It did have a lot of hands-on activities, probably more activities and experiments than the gather round one is. So if you like cutting and pasting and using a, you know, a paper plate to make things, you might like that better. For me, it felt like a lot of the activities were kind of forced and they weren't going to learn a ton from them. And I just didn't have the bandwidth to do that. So a couple of them were good, but most of them were just going to go over things they'd already learned to gather around when I looked back to see if there's stuff we could add in. The only thing we did add was the mini books. Um, I don't know that they loved them, but I did have them. So I printed them and bound them and we looked through them. It was some extra information, but hands down, we prefer the gather round. It was family style. There were different levels of activities for each age. Instead of trying to get my first grader and my fourth grader doing exactly the same thing, which is what happens in The Good and the Beautiful, it was much more age appropriate for that reason for all the different ages. It also had stuff for my you know, toddler to do. So hands down, that's gonna be my pick. Feel free to take a look at them. I'm not saying anything bad about The Good and the Beautiful, it just didn't work out for us. Again, if you have any questions, you want to know more about the difference between them, comment below and I will get back to you. Also, if you enjoyed this review and you'd like to see more, then please subscribe, hit like, all that good stuff. Thanks.